Hello and welcome, history fans, to History Play-by-Play. -play. Today, what probably should be known as the Second American Revolution, Shays Rebellion. Stand all alone. Dangle, shot. He scores! Shays Rebellion is one of the most important things that happens in this early country, and probably the, the least taught, the least understood uh, and, and even just trying to do research on it is extremely difficult without going deep into archives or watching three hours of documentary. So hopefully I can cover this in a way that both illustrates how important it probably should be seen uh, and explains it well enough. Shays' Rebellion happens under the Articles of Confederation. Again, a government, uh, the first government of the United States, which has very little national power and gives all power to the states. Daniel Shays himself is a Revolutionary War veteran, someone who was in a lot of key battles, including Bunker Hill. Uh, his, his most prized possession is a sword given to him by the Marquis de Lafayette. No slouch, a war veteran. Uh, and so after the war, he is happy to go back to Massachusetts and to create a farm. The thing is that the army is no longer a, a major force, uh, and so the prices for farm goods goes way down because demand goes way down. So we have a bunch of new farmers, former veterans, former of the revolution, going to become farmers, uh, and a lot fewer people needing to be provided food because the army is no longer active. And so we get a, a perfect storm of people taking on a lot of debt to buy land, to buy seed, to buy equipment, uh, and then having no way to sell, nowhere to sell that stuff. And so it becomes a major problem. A lot of people go deep into debt. And at this time, there is something called debtor's prison. Debtor's prison is if you owed money, the person who you owed money to could tell you that they could, could say that they have to go to jail. Put them in jail. They're not paying their debt. The first obvious problem is how are they supposed to pay that debt? And they're in jail. How are they supposed to pay it? Well, first off, it's supposed to be for bad faith is the idea, that they are actively not paying the debt. They are they're doing other things. They have the money and, and aren't paying it. This is a punishment uh, from old English law. That's not usually how it actually goes. The official answer is that their family is supposed to work and try and get all of that, that money to pay their debt and release them from jail. But this is the 1700s. Gender roles and norms are much more strict. Women can't really work. I, 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 the, the, the logic of this is all deeply flawed. And if it doesn't trouble you, I'm concerned. So people are rotting away in debtor, debtor's prison. Usually debtor's prison becomes a life sentence because how are you supposed to pay that debt with the breadwinner no longer there? Daniel Shea starts doing that, not only very Boston thing, but that very American thing. He starts going to the pub and complaining about the situation and the, the ongoing threat that he could be facing debtor's prison. Uh, and this slowly gets more and more uh, steam and it starts going to town meetings and talking about this stuff. And eventually he, he gathers a bit of a following that people are, are in similar situations or feel his pain and they're with him. They like Daniel Shays. He's a good enough speaker to rally people to his cause. And so, thinking about, okay, people are scared and they're following Shays, but they need something to do to actually make this work. How can they stop people being sentenced to debtor's prison? Uh, and if you open this up to the classroom, you end up getting all sorts of great answers that make a lot of sense. But this is this is the most basic Occam's razor. What's the simplest way to literally stop people being sentenced? Well, you shut down the courts. Uh, if, if there's no court, they can't sentence you to debtor's prison. I, I, I mean, the logic's there. It's solid. Checks out. Uh, and so they take, a lot of these guys are, are veterans of the war, Shays certainly is, and so they're trying to, to play this up and make, make it a, a, a symbol of what they fought for and that they fought for the revolution, and now they're being hurt by the revolution. Well, the, the, the result of the revolution. And so Shays takes the, his followers, they put their old uniforms on, they get out their old rifles, uh, and they go and they just simply stand at attention outside the courthouse. They all just just standing at it. And you can imagine a, a militia group. I mean, okay, if we, if we saw people in tri-corner hats outside, we might be a little more curious than scared. But, I mean, if you saw massive military formations outside, you'd be a bit concerned if you were inside the building that they were, they were outside of. 
And then they make a big show of loading their guns. And of course, loading a gun at this point is a multi-step process of uh, pulling out a ramrod and ramming it home. Uh, well, loading a bullet in, then ramming it home. And then you got to prime it. And, and just having those guns loaded, you know, with shouting the commands, doing it just very, very uh, ostentatiously gaining that uh, attention and making people very concerned of, well, what's going to happen next? They march into the building peaceably. Nothing, there is no violence, there's no threat of violence, no one says there's any threat of violence. But the act itself is threatening enough, understanding that these people are under duress, and they shut down the courts. Judges call off hearings, the courts are shut down. In the end, this works. And so the movement grows. And this kind of thing is done, uh, it's still small scale, throughout Mass Western Massachusetts, of pushing for better and better. Uh, Massachusetts government he refuses to help. This is, this is a Western problem. You guys deal with it. And, and the whole point of early America is decentralizing and avoiding tyrannical government. So any, any come down, any enforcement from government is seen as a bad thing at this point. Uh, and again, understandably so. If you watch the Articles of Confederation video, they, we just got rid of a tyrannical government. So Shays begins gathering an army, and the plan is to march on the state government in Boston. Uh, and and it's not like like the government wasn't trying to do some things. There were some acts to try and relieve tax burdens and try and get rid of some of this debt. But all in all, it's hollow, and none of it fixed the problem. But if they're going to march on Boston, they need a whole lot more than the hunting rifles and remnants from, from their service that then they have. And their option is to raid the Springfield Armory. Uh, that's the, the guns are, are placed there. Let's go get them. Uh, and so Shays kind of overdoes his planning. Uh, he, he plans a three-pronged attack, everyone coming and surrounding it all at once. Uh, and so there's a lot of coordinating that has to go on between uh, the armies and messengers are going back and forth. And one of those messengers is captured and the plan is revealed to uh, the state government. And it's kind of a big, oh no. Uh, they, what, they don't have the uh, military. The, the, the local militia, I want to say, was 400 men. And they could get as many as 800 if they called in every setup they had uh, for enlistments. Shays had more than 1,500 men. Even under your best case scenario, this is going to be a pitched battle and it might not end well. They start calling to other states and other states are like, this is your problem, deal with it. Uh, and the national government really doesn't have a big help. So they need a bigger army. But how do you get a bigger army? They, the state government doesn't have to try and hire anyone. There is no real national army that the government can send. Uh, other states don't care or feel that, well, this is a Massachusetts problem uh, and good, good on them. They got us into all this in the first place. Uh, there, there's a, there's a lot of interstate issues. Um, and so what it, it'd be like, what, what do we, what do we do? Uh, and in the end, and this, it's super fuzzy of the actual details. And I, I believe me, I tried to track some of this stuff down. And if you have the sources, send them my way. I'd love to see them comments. That's what they're for. Uh, a group of wealthy people who were worried about their loans not being paid. Okay, so Shays, Shays and his men aren't paying back their debts. That's a problem. But if they storm the state government with weapons from the Springfield Armory, we're never going to get any of those debts paid. And if, if, if we stop them, we might get some of those debt, debts paid. So some money is better than no money. Ergo... They financed an army uh, that was led by Benjamin Lincoln, a, for, a, a general from the, the American Revolution, to march in uh, and, and disperse this rebellion. And it happened when four protesters died, uh, but no shots were fired in the main attack, so it's unclear. Uh, again, there's so little that's good information on this uh, that's easy to digest without reading novels and, and documentary series and so on. The point is that without these private merchant backers, which is usually how you see it phrased, there isn't an army to stop Shays. And if Shays goes and wins at Springfield and then topples the state government in Massachusetts, 
that's a whole game changer as far as who's going to Congress, who's dealing with these changes. And if he sees success in Massachusetts, why wouldn't you see this in other state capitals? Why wouldn't you see a full-fledged second American revolution? Really and truly, we got bailed out by the rich guys in a way that's the opposite of what happens now. I mean, don't don't at me. I know there's a lot more with with uh, uh, happening with, with bailouts from wealthy people in in the turn of the 19th, 20th century, uh, J.P. Morgan and such. But anyways, without those wealthy people bailing out the U.S., the U.S. government stops, uh, and and we see a whole new revolution, and it just continues and continues, and perhaps gets out of hand like the French Revolution did, or so many others. I, revolutions are not easy. That should be a key takeaway uh, from just world history, that revolutions are never clean, including ours. The overall ending, and what really is the takeaway from Shays' Rebellion, is that the Articles of Confederation failed that they could not act as a nation to deal with a crisis that was happening in a local place. And therefore, the country needs a stronger central government if we are to manage this nation of states that are united. There has to be a stronger go government. And that would lead directly to the Constitution. And that is all I got for you. That's the end of the episode. What you just saw is this teacher's interpretation of events. If you use this for a class, let me know how that went in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you can figure out how today's jersey matches the content, let me know in the comments. That's extra credit. I'm John Baranowski. Thanks for watching.